All right, it's the first official movie for 2022. Let's see how it turned out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for The 355. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. And guys, like I said, this is the first official film for 2022, being the 355. And this is a film that I was somewhat looking forward to. It's being directed by Simon Kinberg. And this is the gentleman right here. If you don't know who he is, he's did a few popular films that you may be familiar with, being The Martian, Logan, Fantastic Four, and X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, The Martian and Logan were super fire fantastic four stick or whatever the hell you want to call that that was crap and x-men days of future past great movie i also like dark phoenix where i like the ending of that movie you know the movie itself wasn't that great he worked with jessica chastain in that one but the ending the ending battle that was dope as hell i love that but he is more known as a producer i mean he has a ton of producing credits if you just scroll down right here he has like yeah, 37 producer credits he is more known yeah that's what he's known for um but Recently, he has been getting into the directing game and he doesn't really have that much under his belt. He has the 355, which we're talking about right now, X-Men, Dark Phoenix, and that was it. I mean, a lot of people was afraid that he was touching this film. And if you've seen it, you know how that turned out. But one of the other reasons why I was looking forward to this movie is the cast. I mean, it has a great star-studded Hollywood cast. I mean, you have people all over the place. You have Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o, Diane Kruger. I remember her from the National Treasure movies. You know, she's a joy. You also have Penelope Cruz, Sebastian Stan, and Edgar Ramirez. And there's a few other familiar faces that pops up in this movie as well. So I was like, okay, Simon Kimberg, he's a great producer. He knows how to organize a film. I didn't think Dark Phoenix, the X-Men movie, was trash. And you also have this star the cast. So it looks like we're going to have a great time on our hands. You know, Jessica Chastain did pitch that to Simon Kimberg while they was on set for Dark Phoenix. And that's how they was able to bring this to fruition but all that being said you know i was like, okay you know this seems like it will be promising a great way to start out the year especially with people always used to saying that january is a toilet bowl season for movies which it really is and i don't even know if you can say that anymore but you'll know if i feel that way after you hear my review for this but before i get into all my likes and dislikes and all the nitty-gritty let me tell you exactly what it's all about when a top secret weapon falls into missionary hands a wild card CIA agent joins forces with three international agents on a lethal mission to retrieve it while staying a step ahead of a mysterious woman who's tracking their every move. All right, guys, jumping right into it. I am split down the middle with exactly how I feel about this film. There are a number of aspects that I really liked in this film that I really did enjoy, but there's also a ton of other things that made me want to grind my teeth to dust in frustration with all the crazy things that was going on in this film. But let's start with the good. Let me talk about the good. First thing that I really liked about this movie, I just spoke about it, was the cast. This is a Hollywood star-studded cast. Jessica Chastain, Lupita, Sebastian Stan, I already went down the list. Everybody does a great job in the role. Everybody is convincing. I was even able to sympathize with a number of the characters. I mean, seriously, I was attached to them. The film even took a decent amount of time to focus on them individually, just to show what they're passionate about, you know, who their loved ones and friends are, and just kind of what gets them motivated and moving in the morning. It did not spend too much time on them going over every aspect of their life, but it was enough for me to care. And that is something that I did like about this film is the cast i mean everybody did a great job and like i said they were convincing and i want to focus right now on jessica chastain especially because she was the standout to me in this film now she was either nominated or won the oscar for zero dark 30 i'm sorry if i don't have that memorized please respectfully let me know in the comment section but in that film you know she was a rough tough authoritative figure and we also get a little bit more of that in this film and i like that too the action in this film performed by jessica chastain two thumbs Thumbs up. I have to give it to her. She did a great job. She is an international spy. And I mean, this is an action movie. We've seen action movies 
all of our lives. We've seen hand to hand fights, gun battles, chases and cars on foot, etc. It's nothing new. And there's nothing new in this film as far as that's concerned as well. But seeing Jessica Chastain in the role, I was very impressed. I don't know why, but I just didn't imagine seeing her doing that before. But now after seeing it, I, I said to myself, wow, I really want to see Jessica Chastain in more action movies. I mean, she did a great job. I mean, there is a scene in this movie. Too, I was talking about chases and just a second ago. There's a scene in this movie where she's chasing somebody on foot while they're on a motorcycle and she has a pistol. And it's very convincing. I mean, I, it was very invigorating. I was at the edge of my seat. Okay, Jessica, I see you. You know, you are really working that pistol with the silencer and able to take out this this threat right here. Like you're serious. You're you are really going, you know, for the good stuff, trying to get the bag. And I believe you. And I, I really did enjoy that. I mean, she's jumping over tables and I mean, she's just doing a great job in the role. And so I have to give it to her there. Everybody else did a great job on their role and their respective roles too with their talent or you know their expertise in the field of being assassin or you know a mercenary or anything like that but Jessica Chastain she she stole the show as far as that's concerned and I just have to give credit where credit is due and guys another thing that I like is the story itself is good the execution we'll get to in a second but the story is good I read it it's a top secret weapon it cannot get into the hands of evil mercenaries or the world is going to die you know the bad guys are going to win it's another mcguffin simple you know it's believable hey we've seen that before there's no reason why we can't see it again so i like that and i will also say towards the end of the film the stakes did raise out of the blue like out of nowhere and i was like whoa the antagonists here are pretty serious if you don't do what they say they're gonna chop and blow off some heads and they're doing that right now and i really wasn't expecting that and it really made me sit up in my seat when i was watching this movie all right guys so that wraps it up for the good now let's move it over to the bad First thing I want to talk about is the length of this film with it being entirely too long. I mean, it comes in at two hours and four minutes. And you may be saying to yourself, Brandon, two hours and four minutes, that's not that long. It's probably an hour and 55 minutes, you know, if you don't consider credits. That is still 30 minutes too long. I was like, wow, what are they doing with this? This thing is dragging. Seriously, I thought that we were at the climax of this movie. You know, at the end, the third act, the big action scene where everything is going to go down. And then nothing happens. I'm like, wait a minute. That was kind of anticlimactic. I look at the time and my watch. I'm like, we got 32 more minutes to go. No. Oh, no, man. I was just over it. I mean, the pacing that they put together as far as that concern was completely off. So that's the first bad thing about this movie is it's entirely too long. The next bad thing, and this is absolutely the worst, is nothing makes sense at all there is so much logic and reason that is ignored in this movie that isn't embarrassing i mean who was the script supervisor somebody that was deaf and blind it makes no sense i don't understand how somebody can read over it and be like okay this is all competent green light let's go they must they must have lost the bed or been blackmailed or something like that because it just doesn't make sense i said that you have a top secret weapon that if it falls into mercenary hands, you know, just going to get a global disaster. So I just have a question for you, audience. If you're involved in this type of lifestyle and you're moving this type of equipment around, whether it's this technology or any type of illegal drugs, anything like that, if you're inviting the party over to your crib, wouldn't it make sense for you to use your guards to check to see if they have weapons on them or not? Just for security reasons. I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but to me, that's pre-kindergarten 101 logic right there. But they don't use it in this movie. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And it really is frustrating when you have so much at stake. But the exit plan getaway strategy is, okay, when we're in the room and we see the device, we're just going to shoot everybody, run, and hopefully we'll get away. Really? Come on, man. And guys, I'm really big on communication. I don't think anything is possible if you don't communicate with your surrounding parties, with your surrounding peers, especially when you have something like this on the line. So you have MI6, the CIA, the NSA, FBI, all of these global international intelligence agencies that supposedly, I mean, I don't know, I don't work for them in the real life, but I mean, we're told from all the movies in Hollywood that they have all the money, power, and resources. They have all of this right here, but their plan is almost foiled because they don't want to communicate with each other. The bad guys almost win so many times because these agencies don't want to communicate, and it's ridiculous. I mean, so many people died unnecessarily because all these groups are in fight 
fighting and not wanting to get along. Now, you may be saying to yourself, now, Brandon, this is an international spy espionage movie. So you're going to be dealing with moles, traitors, double and triple agents. So you can't just be working with everybody spilling all the beans because that may foil your plans. I get that. But there is still a large amount of common sense that is not used in this movie. And my goodness gracious, it is mind boggling. I mean, you have not one, not two, but at least three scenes in this movie to where the good guys, the protagonists, the people that we're supposed to be rooting for are chasing down a bad guy. But then you have another good group over here chasing the same bad guy as well. Common sense would tell you, I'll be like, okay, hey, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. If we're both going after this assailant, this mercenary, this assassin, let's work together. Or let me sit back and let them do all the dirty work and I'll come in to clean it up. But no, right where stuff is about to go down, they start turning on each other and fighting and beating the crap out of each other while the bad guy's getting away. I'm looking left to my right. Ain't nobody there to talk to. But I'm just like, what is going on? This is just stupid. And that happens multiple times in this film. And I'm just over here like, oh, my God. Also, don't have your antagonist in this film being 100% violent in this part of the movie. But then they want to hold their punches in another point of the movie. If they're a cold-hearted killing murderer, have them murder people. I mean, I, the reason why I say that is... There's times where they could murder the bad guys, but instead they don't want to murder them. And that gives them an opportunity to come back and ruin their plans later. If you just want to shot them in the head right there, you the one. But you don't know. They got the mustache twirling, bit like, ah, and you're going to actually see me accomplish my plan. And there's nothing you can do about it. Muhahaha is stupid. And the thing about it is I said it, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They actually say that in this film, but they don't use it till its full potential. Something else that's really frustrating is this film is a bit predictable. There's people that die, supposedly, and I'm just like, okay, that person is not dead. They're going to pop up at the end, and they do. You know, also, I really did love Lapita in this film, but there was also a few aspects to where good guys chasing a bad guy with guns blazing but she's walking around with her cell phone broad daylight okay turn left turn right right here the bad guy can see you like he knows that you're with him you could get shot but at the same time it doesn't make sense that the bad guy's not shooting you it's just kind of a mess and it's just like what are you doing here so there are some good things about the film. I mean, you have a great cast of convincing. I was able to sympathize with them and the action was great, especially with Jessica Chastain. You will have great time with the action. It makes sense for the most part, but that plot synopsis right there, it just doesn't make sense as far as the execution. There's just too many logic and common sense holes that are ignored and not acknowledged the right way. And like I said earlier, it's frustrating and mind boggling. And that's just to say the least. I will go ahead and give my rating for this at the very end. But guys, that is just my pen and i want to thank you so much for tuning in if you did like this video please go ahead and give me that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel helping me reach 35,000 subscribers now why would you want to subscribe to my channel well let me tell you if you do subscribe you're going to get great things like this like movie reviews spoiler movie reviews series reviews and also a weekly movie news roundup show to where i compile all the news and entertainment from the previous week put it together and I put together a live show where I have a number of panel of guests and we just have a fun time live talking about all of it. You will also get random trailer reactions and also me talking about my favorite TV shows on streaming right now, like Power Book 2 Ghost Season 2 and just also interviews and other random things. So make sure you subscribe and help me reach 35 thousand subscribers on my way to 100k at the end of 2022 but guys if i had to rate the 355 out of a one out of ten unfortunately it does not get a passing grade it almost does but i have to give it a 5.5 out of 10 yes a 5.5 out of 10 so when you go see it yourself hopefully you enjoy it but come back and let me know in the comment section if you liked it or not but guys again i want to thank you so much for tuning in and before you go don't forget then my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.